Welcome to Victory Church Craddock. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's so lovely to be with all of you. And I just want to start by just telling you all how much we love Will and Jeannie. Um, and then and Ryan and Rhonda are so special. It's like we've come from Durban, from family to family. And um, yeah, I'm just so proud of what you guys have done here in two years. And just the amazing love for all of you. So thank you. We just want to say from Harvest, thank you so much for loving them and for taking such good care of them and Ryan and Ron's. Um, so I just want to start by praying if we can just close our eyes. So Holy Spirit, we just, we say that you are the most important in this room right now. And so we say, come Holy Spirit, come and presence yourself as you're in all of our hearts. Presence yourself in this room. Lord, we do ask for angelic assistance for, Lord, we know that your presence is more important than anything else. And so we just say, Holy Spirit, we love you. Father God, we love you. Jesus, we love you. And I thank you so much for all the words that you want to speak this evening, Lord. And that, that the word and the seeds would, fo- would fall on beautiful, fresh, fresh soil. And there will be a great harvest that comes from this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's so lovely being with all of you. And it's so special, all the children here. Can I just ask one or two of you to quickly come up? Oh, so precious. Do you want to come too? Oh, I just, I love children so much because Jesus said that they are the greatest in the kingdom. And, um, and he always says that we need to become like little children. And so uh, I, I just love how the disciples were like, no, no, get the children away. And Jesus was like, Bring the children to me. And so I I know that I love children because Jesus loves children so much. And so we just want to honor you, precious ones, because we know that you are the greatest in the kingdom. And so we just love you so much. You can go and sit. Thank you. And um, I'm quite sure the Lord says that we need to become like little children because as we get older, You know, we have more fears or, you know, our imagination, creativity, all of that seems to die over the years. But these little children are creative and that's why it's so important. So lovely to have all these teachers and principals and deputy principals and everyone all around because we need to just keep them to keep, they need to keep being creative and imagining and all of those things. So um, I'm really passionate about children just to share very briefly. Um, Richard and I have got five beautiful children. We love them so much. Gemma's in matric. Chloe's in grade 10. And then we've got Josh in grade 8. Gabriel is in grade 6. And then Ben's in grade 4. And if I could have had more kids, I would have. So, um, yeah. And I'm, I'm a principal of a preschool. It's called Seedlings. It's part of Harvest Church. And we've got nearly 90 kids with us, but it's so wonderful. We've got Hindus and Muslims, but we always say that we're a Christian school. And, um, but it's so beautiful. The Lord told me one thing. He said, Tans, I want you to teach them the Lord's Prayer. And so we sing the Lord's Prayer with the children every Wednesday and every Friday morning. We sing, Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. So we sing the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. And it's so beautiful seeing these little two-year-olds going, thy will be done. And, um, and I just love it because when they're 80, I, I know that in their last moments, they're going to go back and go, our oh, Father. And actually, it's a salvation prayer. And so I just want to encourage all of you to sing. Um, or say the Lord's Prayer with your children or with your nieces and nephews because it's such a powerful prayer. So I'm very passionate about the Lord's Prayer. I've got so much to share with you. It's absolutely going to be very difficult to share it all in half an hour. Um, So what I want to start off with is encountering Jesus. 
because I know that when we see Jesus and when we encounter him, we won't ever, ever be the same again. And um, I got saved at 23, but I remember flying on an airplane to America. There was a revival there, and I had a face-to-face encounter with Jesus. And I still feed on that encounter that I had with him. And so I think whenever there's a message, it's always like, I just want to get people to encounter Jesus. Because when we see him face to face, we will never ever come under religion or under law or anything like that at all. We will, we will know this King Jesus. And so I wanted to have a time of us later on just to have a soaking time. Um, where, and I've been praying since Jeannie and William invited us that each and every single one of us would encounter Jesus. And, um, you know, so I know we need to have scripture to make sure that this is all, because I know in the word it says, and that you will never see the face of God and all of that. But there are so many scriptures that he wants us to see him. And, you know, it says that we are seated right now with him in heavenly places. So, you know, we are made up of mind, body, soul, and spirit. And so we place so much value on physical things that we can see, but we, we don't place value that actually the spiritual realm and that is way more real and eternal rather than this, which will all fall away. And so, and so I really just want to encourage us all that, I mean, even in Revelations, in Revelation 4, it says, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. This was John speaking. And it said, And the voice I had first speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. And so it just continues, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And so it's just to encourage you that the Lord wants us to step into, we have the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And the reason why I'm speaking to us all about this with kids ministry and how to teach children and how to get them to encounter Jesus is we need to encounter them first. We need to walk through that first so that we can bring them in. And they're able to see so easily, but somehow we never validate what they see or what they feel. You know, well, you know, they'll feel scared or whatever, and we'll go, no, keep quiet, go to bed. But actually they, they're either seeing or they are feeling. And so it's just to actually encourage, what do you see? What do you feel like Jesus is saying? And to make that conversation so real for them and, um, and to encourage that. So I just wanted to read that with you. And also Ephesians 2, it said, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. So that is where we are right now. And Jesus wants us to see from heaven's perspective, because if we're not able to do that, we're not actually able to bring the kingdom down. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. And so as we experience more and more of the kingdom, are we able to bring the kingdom down? I wanted to share with you as well from Jeremiah 1 verse 5. It says, before I formed you uh, in the womb, I knew you. So God knew each and every single one of us before any of us was born. And so he knew us, which means that we were with him. So sometimes, you know, our minds can't comprehend all of the heaven and earth, but actually God wants us to step into a bigger reality of where we're from and what we have for and where we're going back home to. And so I knew that this was real when my daughter Chloe, who was six years old, came up to me. We were living in California and she said, Mom, you know, I've always known you and I'm cooking breakfast and she's like, well, I'm like, what, Chloe? She said, I've always known you because I was with you before time began because God knew us before we were born. And, um, and so even though on earth you're my mom, you're my sister because we've got the same father. I mean, she was six. So when she told me that, that's when I started searching the scripture about 
I knew you before you were born. And um, so it's just all those beautiful, powerful things. And, and also to realize that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. And so I really feel like even more God wants to open up our spiritual eyes to see and our ears to hear. And I knew uh, the power of the physical, uh, the, the spiritual realm when someone shared the story with me. She walked into a restaurant, and uh, when she walked into a restaurant, there was absolute confusion. People were saying, where does this burger go? No, this goes to table six. No, no, that's for table seven. Oh, no, we made two burgers then. There was just complete confusion in the restaurant. And so the lady said, okay, Lord, what's going on here? And he said, I want you to look up to the ceiling. And she looked up, and she saw this huge demonic sort of creature, like a slimy sort of cr like slimy creature on the ceiling. And she just said, Lord, what is that? And he said, it's a spirit of confusion. And so she d he just said, take authority, because God said, I've given you all authority as sons and daughters of God, and command that spirit to leave. And uh, she looked at that spirit, and she said, in the name of Jesus, I command you, spirit of confusion, to leave this room. And all of a sudden, that thing just <laughs> did that, and just literally left out of the um, restaurant. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, this goes to table five, and this goes to table four. And when she told me that, everything changed in my spiritual walk with the Lord. Because um, I just actually realized our fight is not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. And so when, when Jeannie and Will asked me to share, uh, I really felt like God wanted us to, you know, I mean, even in Job, I just want to read it now. It says, because um, there was so much confusion with all his friends talking and everything, and then towards the end, he said, um, Job said, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. And that really stood out to me. It's like Father God wants us to see in the physical and in the spiritual. And as we're able to do that more and more and more, are we able to train and teach these kids? Because we don't know what they're going to face. But we want to train and teach them in the spirit to see and, uh, and all of that. So it's just so exciting that um, that he wants us to do but you know if we walk through earth not knowing this and that and that you know we just you know people perish for lack of knowledge so so Lord even now I thank you God that you open up our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes and Lord even that you would open up um, our, our smelling our hearing our seeing our tasting that even, Lord, the fragrance of heaven would just break out. Lord, we just want to say, let it be on earth as it is in heaven, Lord, that we would even smell the fragrance of lavender or roses or whatever you want to do, Lord, that you would open up our, our smell, our taste, our touch, that we would be able to walk and operate in the spiritual realm more than ever before, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jeremiah 33, 3, it also says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So just be encouraged. As you call to him, he is going to show you great and unsearchable things. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18, it says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so he really wants us to see more and more and more. And um, so what I would love to do um, is just tell you the different ways that God speaks to us. Because if we have a soaking session now, which we're going to do, God speaks to us in different ways. So he could speak to us where we audibly hear his voice. We could hear him in our inner audible voice. So it's actually... Um, we, we, we hear a voice, and it sounds like us, but it's, it's the Father speaking. Through a whisper, spontaneous thoughts, you'll just carry on driving in your day, and suddenly a thought just comes into your mind. Feelings or impressions. I don't know if you've ever walked into a room, and all of a sudden you just feel depression, or you walk in and you can feel the atmosphere change. And so, you know, 
If you could see in the spirit, you'd see it's probably a spirit of depression or a spirit of suicide or a spirit of death or whatever it is. But actually, you know, God's showing us and speak to, speaking to us by feeling or impressions, by knowing through scripture, through other people. You could have a conversation with someone and suddenly someone's like, you know, they just say something out of the blue, but it's actually God speaking through them to you. Through signs like um, colors or numbers, I often see 12, 12, 22, 22. And if I look at my watch, I often see double digits. And if you're not aware of it, then you won't see it. But sometimes, once you're aware of it, you'll start driving and you'll see a car registration. And it's 22, 22. And so I would see 22, 22 all the time. And then I was like, God, what is that? And then he said, go to Isaiah 22, 22. And I went to Isaiah 22, 22, and he said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Every door I open, no man can shut. And every door I shut, no man can open. So it's just to be more and more aware of what he's saying and what he's speaking. It will be through number plates. It's not you going mad. It's actually our father is a good father. And as tangibly as Will wants to be around um, Judd and just give him a hug and say, come eat with me, my boy. I mean, that's uh, how much more our Father in heaven wants to say, come sit. You know, there have been times where in the middle of the night I'll make two cups of tea and um, Rich will wake up in the morning and go, well, what's this full cup of tea with, you know, um, for? And, I mean, it's just my little thing with Jesus where we have tea together. <laughs> And, um, and so it's that intimacy where, you know, it's not rules and laws and I've read the Bible so I can tick the box, but actually he wants to walk with us, talk with us. He wants to see us face to face. And so, um, and just for us to grow more and more in love with him. Um, he speaks to us through pictures, visions, dreams, um, a picture in your mind. Um, through nature, like as Jeannie was saying the other day, she was walking through the forest and just saw this beautiful flower that just popped out of nowhere. And it was just the Father speaking to her through that flower. And so I think the more we become aware of the detail of God, the more we will just praise Him and be grateful. And, um, and then also through art. And then I also wanted to say the three voices that we will hear is either God's voice, and how will we know it's His voice? is when he speaks with kindness, gentleness, truth, he speaks the truth. There's Satan's voice who is daily accusing us, speaking lies, confusion, blame, anger. That's the enemy's voice. And then our voice, which usually expresses our own needs and desires, or very sort of self-focused, like I want this, or I want that, or I need this. And so it's just to also be aware of the three different voices, the voices, and to know, recognize whether, whether it's the Father's voice. So for example, if I walk into a shop and I want to encourage someone in the Lord, I'll, he'll go, Tanya, go and speak to that lady at the till. Then I'll go, okay. And then as I'm walking, you'll hear a voice going, are you sure? Like, how embarrassing. What happens if someone says something about it? Or, you know, and then immediately you can, you know that that's the enemy's voice trying to bring fear from you to speak. And then I, like, what is, what am I going to feel and that kind of thing. So it's just to be aware that actually the Father's voice gives you boldness and courage. And um, so I just wanted to encourage you with always go, is this the Father's voice? Is this the enemy's voice or my voice? And then to also say that, you know, put your hands on your heart. So th this is, these are the eyes of your heart. And God has given us our imagination as a gift to us. And so when we have this time of just soaking in his presence, like even now, if you all close your eyes and I say, can you see an apple? Are you able to see an apple, a red apple? And uh, close your eyes, can you see a waterfall? So it's as easy as that. We don't have to overthink it. As you close your eyes, you see a waterfall, you see a red apple. It's a gift that the Father has given us, our imagination. And so if you imagine it, that we are mind, body, soul, and spirit. So when we pray and ask the Father to take us to heaven or to take us to see the throne room, it is our spirit man which is completely connected to God that is able to encounter him 
in heaven because our body falls away. But then we overthink it and we stop it and whatever. So I just want to encourage you, just allow God to do what he wants to do with, 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 with all, of, all, all that you have. Um, so our image center is a tool that God has given us. And in Ephesians 1, it says, I pray also that your eyes of your heart may be enlightened, opened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. So this is how we can teach our kids to experience heaven and to see Jesus. So that's the one thing I want to do. I just want to have us just to... So all of us have got a special secret garden with Jesus. So one day when we leave this earth, our, our bodies stay, but our spirits go to heaven. And so God's not waiting just for us when we're in heaven to experience him. We want to know him. You know, it's like that we may know him. And so you want to know him on earth. You want to know what he loves. You want to know what his favorite colors are. You want to know how he's feeling. I mean, Jesus wept. Jesus, you know, you want to know him. So when you get to heaven, you're not like, oh, I could have, I could have known him. And so, so all of us have got a secret garden, whether it's you close your eyes, you step straight into your special garden with him. And uh, Jesus is always wanting to meet with you. I mean, there's the river of life in heaven. There's the throne room where the Father sits. And, the, and, and angels just encircle the throne going, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And so the Lord just wants you to really just step into encountering him. So that's what I would like to do. And then after you have that time, here are some crayons. So remember, we need to become like little children. So you're welcome to come and get a piece of paper and crayons and just draw what you saw or draw what you feel or draw what you heard. Remember, God speaks to us all in different ways. And then another thing, I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to have time, but this is a map of the Great Karoo. And Craddock, thanks, Jeannie, you guys were amazing. But I just had, my, I had it on my heart, so even if you want to do this after Rich Speaks tonight, but just to ask God for a word for the great career. What is he saying over this place where you are living right now? What are we going to prophesy over this place? What do we see? What, what are the words that have been spoken over? So there, there's paper here and there, and then you're also welcome just to pin it all over here because we need to declare and speak life over this place. If there's been loss, um, if there's been drought, if there, whatever it is, we're going to ask God to come at, like, just come like with rivers of living water and just to, we're going to speak, speak blessing over this great career. If we want salvations, can God save a whole city in a day, a whole nation in a day? We just want to speak life. So just ask God, even as rich preachers, um, just ask God for a word. And then, because there's something about recording, there's something about actually writing. So we just declare the harvest is ripe. There will be souls saved. Even if you want to stick here, people that you still want to see saved, just to call out to God for their salvation. But there's something about just declaring over this place that there'll be revival with the youth or, or revival with just whatever you feel, just to come and put that over there. Um, so I just want to invite you into this space and just for you to close your eyes. So you're welcome to lie on the floor or you're welcome to sit but just find a space in the room so that it can just be a time of just you and Jesus. Do you want to lie down on the floor? You're welcome. <laughs> you just be comfortable. Don't worry about anyone around you. Just close your eyes. So just close your eyes and just say, Father God, can you take me into my secret garden with you?
And I want you to look around at the garden, your special space with Jesus. Look down at what you're wearing. And Jesus is there waiting for you. Walk towards Jesus. And just say, Jesus, what do you want to say to me? Now Jesus wants to show you all the beautiful places that, that are in heaven. So just say, Jesus, can you take me to the river of life? Swim in the river of life with him. Father, I thank you that heaven is our home. And this is where we've always been. And I thank you that you're going to show us more and more of, of heaven so we're able to bring it down to earth. And, and the most special place in heaven is the throne room. So just say, Jesus, can you take me to the throne room? see Father God seated on the throne, ask Jesus to take you to your Father God. And then say, Father God, can you pick me up and put me on your lap? And just allow his unconditional love just to flow from his heart straight into yours. The purest of love. And then say, Father God, 
What were you thinking when you made me? And then as Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, I want you to ask the Father to show you where you seated in heavenly places with him. And that's where you're seated right now, even as you're on earth. That you are a son and a daughter of the King of kings and Lord of lords. That you're loved, accepted, chosen, set apart, born on earth for such a time as this. <laughs> 